The first thing we need to do is draw a picture to represent the given information. So we have an airplane beginning at City A, it travels east to City B, a distance of 483 kilometers, and then it travels south to City C, a distance of 966 kilometers. And in part A of the question, we need the magnitude of the airplane's displacement. Now, when you're looking for displacement, what you always will do is draw a straight line from where the object's motion began, which in this case is city A, to where the object's motion ended, which in this case was city C, and you want the length of that vector that you draw. Now, of course, when we draw that vector, we have our displacement, we can label that R, and then we can see that it forms a right triangle. Now, from right triangles, we know that the hypotenuse squared is equal to one leg of the triangle squared plus the other leg squared. This is the Pythagorean theorem, of course. So we'll simply fill in the information. So the hypotenuse is the displacement vector whose magnitude we are seeking. So that would be the r squared. And then this will equal one leg of the triangle for 483 kilometers squared plus the other leg of the triangle, 966 kilometers squared. So pick up your calculator and do the 483 squared plus the 966 squared. You get a pretty big number. So right now we have the Displacement magnitude squared is equal to 1166445 kilometers squared, and then square root both sides. And when you do that, you will see that the magnitude of the displacement, and usually with magnitude we indicate it by using absolute value bars, is about 1080 kilometers. So this would be the correct answer to part A of the question. In part B, we need the direction of the plane's displacement. Now that direction would be indicated by this angle right here. We'll call that theta. We can see from the right triangle that the tangent of that angle would equal the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. Now the side that is opposite of that angle, if you kind of move opposite of the angle, is 966 kilometers and then divide that by the adjacent side, which is the 483 kilometers. Now with these particular numbers, when you divide them out, you actually get exactly two, which is convenient. So now we have the tangent of the angle is equal to two. And then to actually solve for theta, what you have to do is do the inverse tangent on both sides. And what happens is the inverse tangent and the tangent cancel each other out and you have theta is equal to the inverse tangent of two. And if you punch that into your calculator, making sure that it is set to degree mode, you're going to get about 63.4 degrees. But let's be careful how we represent that angle precisely. We note that this line projecting from city A would serve as a positive X axis. And then here would be your positive and negative Y axis like this. In physics, when you measure an angle in a clockwise fashion, which is what we're doing. We're measuring it clockwise from the positive x-axis, then that angle is assigned a negative value. So technically this angle should be negative 63.4 degrees because it was measured clockwise from the positive x-axis. You can also say the angle is 63.4 degrees south of east. And the reason for that is because that is the compass direction where that angle is pointing. Of course, this is the southerly direction and this is the easterly direction so you can see that that vector is going south of east. We can move on to part C which wants the magnitude of the average velocity. So let's talk about the average velocity equation for part C. Very simple, it is the displacement magnitude divided by the total time of flight. Now, we already know the displacement magnitude, that was 1,080 kilometers, but let's go back and figure out what the total flight time was. We know that to go from city A to city B was 45 minutes, and then from city B to city C is one and a half hours. That's a little tricky because they gave one time in minutes. We want to convert that into hours. So take that minutes right there and simply divide it by 60, and you're going to get 0.75 hours. So now what we do is take those 0.75 hours and add it to the 1.5 hours. That gives us the total time of flight. So we can come down here and say 0.75 hours plus the 1.5 hours. Now, when you work that out, you're going to end up with about 480 kilometers per hour. So that's the correct answer. 
to part C. It's the magnitude of the average velocity. Part D wanted the direction of the average velocity. But here's a key concept. The direction of the average velocity is going to be the same as the direction of the displacement. And remember, we already figured out the direction of the displacement. It was the negative 63.4 degrees, or again, you could say 63.4 degrees south of east. So that we already have for part D. We go to part E, and finally, it wants the average speed. And average speed is slightly different than average velocity. So here we go, let's write it down. So average speed is equal to the distance rather than the displacement. It's the distance divided by the time. Now for the total distance, we recall that the airplane first flew 483 kilometers, then it turned around, went south for 966 kilometers. So you simply add those together and divide by the same time that we computed earlier. And when you work this out, you should get, let's see, about 644 kilometers per hour. So that's the correct answer to part E.